Another thing to notice about the real-time modes is the way in which notes are combined when you cross a bar line. In music, notes and rests are combined according to special grouping rules which depend on the time signature. Let's see what happens if you enter five quavers, or eighth notes, at the beginning of a bar of 4-4. Four, four. When you cross the bar line, four of the quavers are combined into a minim, or half note, which is tied to the remaining quaver. This has to happen because the length of five quavers cannot be made from any single duration, not even a dotted duration. This means we're forced to use multiple notes connected with ties. But what happens if the quavers were entered at the end of the bar instead of at the beginning? I've written this in already and indicated the beats underneath. The note starts on beat two and a half and continues to the end of the bar. In this case, there are two ways to combine the quavers. Either we could have a minim tied to a quaver, like we had before, or we could write the quaver first and the minim second. According to the grouping rules, the second method is the correct one, because this way the minim falls on a beat. This is easier to read and easier to count, because putting the quaver first gets rid of the remainder so that everything else lines up with the beats. In the original example, with the five quavers at the beginning of the bar, it was correct to put the minim first, because that way both notes start on a beat. Here's a quick demonstration of the reverse situation to show that my algorithm does put the quaver first when starting on a half beat. In this case, we were forced to use a tie because the notes couldn't be represented by a single duration. But there are other situations where the grouping rules demand a tie is used even though it's not strictly necessary. Take syncopation, for example, where none of the notes fall on a beat. In this example, I've entered a full bar of semiquavers, or sixteenth notes, and every other semiquaver is tied to the next one, starting with the second. A naive algorithm would combine them like this, replacing every tied pair of semiquavers with a single quaver. The problem is, none of those quavers fall on a beat, so it's difficult for a performer to keep in time if the notes are written this way. In this case, the rules say that the quaver that crosses beat 3 must be broken and tied, because beat 3 occurs in the middle of the bar and is a stressed beat. According to the grouping rules, a note is not allowed to cross a stressed beat unless the note begins and ends on a beat. In this case, the note begins and ends on a half beat, so it cannot cross beat 3 without being broken and tied. Of course, all three bars sound the same. Listen to how none of the notes fall on a beat. Now that the quaver has been broken, there is a note on beat 3, so when the performer sees the conductor indicate beat 3, which is done with a special sideways motion of the conductor's baton, the performer knows exactly where they are in the bar. The final example I've prepared uses a compound time signature. 6-8 is a compound time signature because the top number is a multiple of 3. In compound time signatures, you have to divide the top number by 3 to get the number of beats. So there are two beats in a bar of 6-8, and I've indicated where they are. The example shows what happens if you enter four quavers, or eighth notes, at the beginning of a bar of 6-8. The four quavers could be combined into a single minim, or half note, but actually the rhythmic grouping rules say that they have to be combined into a dotted crotchet and a single quaver. This has the same duration as the minim, but it indicates the start of the second beat. This is done because the rules say that the notes in a compound time signature are not allowed to cross a compound beat, unless they begin and end on a compound beat. This note doesn't end on a compound beat, it ends partway through beat 2, so it has to be broken and tied where it crosses the compound beat. There are many other rules for rhythmic groupings, and there are also many exceptions to those rules and special cases that have to be dealt with. 
The rules that I followed were given by Elaine Gold in Behind Bars, The Definitive Guide to Music Notation. With lots of developers working on MuseScore's code at the same time, it's easy for things to be changed or broken accidentally, but I added test files to MuseScore's code repository to ensure that the rhythmic rules are never broken. This test file shows all the different cases for combining tied notes in 4-4. I added an option to the format menu called Reset Note and Rest Groupings, and this shows how the tied notes should be combined according to the rules. I did the same for the other simple time signatures, 2, 4, 3, 4, and 5, 4. And also for the compound time signatures, 6, 8, 9, 8, and 12, 8. So this is how the groupings are done in those time signatures. The final thing to demonstrate is multi-voice entry in real-time mode. Let's see what happens if you try to enter a chord, so multiple notes at the same time, but the notes within the chord are not sustained for the same duration. In this case, the E note at the top of the chord is sustained for half of the bar, whereas the C is sustained for the whole bar. And let's see what happens if you enter a C by itself for a full bar. When a note is on its own, it's allowed to take up the full bar, so the notes were combined into a semi-breathe or whole note. But the notation rules say that the notes are not allowed to overlap, so when there is a smaller note present, then the long note had to be broken at the end of the short note, and a tie used instead. However, there is a form of notation where notes are allowed to overlap, and I've demonstrated it here. This uses a different musical voice for each overlapping note. In this case, the E is written as a minim in voice 1, while the C is a semi-breathe in voice 2. MuseScore has four voices. Within each voice, the rules have to be obeyed, but between the voices, you are allowed to have overlapping notes. I'll quickly show you how you'd enter this in step time mode. In step time mode, you'd enter the E in voice 1, followed by any other notes in voice 1. Then you'd go back to the beginning and enter the C in voice 2, followed by any other notes in voice 2. So multi-voice entry can take a long time in step time mode because you have to enter each voice separately but I've added an option to the preferences for real-time mode, which allows you to enter all of the notes in all of the voices in a single pass. So when you enter an E for half of the bar, and a C for the whole bar, when you cross the bar line, the notes are separated into the different voices before being combined. So the C semi-breathe is in voice 2, and the E minim is in voice 1, as you'd expect. I've written the code for this feature, but it hasn't been merged into MuseScore's main code repository just yet, because there's still a few bugs, such as these extra rests in the higher voices. But once the bugs are fixed, this will also be available in MuseScore's main code repository. The voice separation algorithm itself is finished, and it works by analysing the notes in the bar and determining the fewest number of voices needed, in this case, two notes overlapped, so two voices were needed. But in the example I've shown down here, there is an overlap, but the C was only played for seven quavers instead of eight, which is slightly less than a full bar. If you remember those rhythmic grouping rules I told you about earlier, in this case, a stressed beat, beat three, has been crossed by the C, and because the C ends on a half beat rather than a full beat, is not allowed to cross a stress beat without being broken and tied. The voice separation algorithm also considers the rhythmic rules, so in this case, there was no need for an extra voice, because the tie has removed the overlap. So the algorithm is optimised in the sense that it uses the fewest voices possible. So those are all the features that I added as part of my semi-real-time MIDI project. You can try them out now in the nightly builds, or they'll be available in MuseScore version 3 when that is released. I'd like to thank MuseScore for taking me on for the project, and Google for funding it through Google Summer of Code. 
This is just my first project with MuseScore, so stay tuned for future videos. Thanks for watching.